Okay, so if you look at the history of JavaScript, um, it becomes kind of interesting when at a certain point they seem to kind of, in my opinion, go downhill um, with the number of features that they added. Um, so if we look here um, in 1999, um, it was pretty reasonable what they added. They added try catch statements, they added um, regular expressions, very reasonable stuff, right? Um, but really in 2000, and again, more sort of minor features, I would say, but in 2015, this is called ECMAScript 6, and this is where the number of features just seems to like go up exponentially. Um, they added let, const, because before we had var, which was a scoping thing, um, but arrow functions, template literals, and classes, okay? So they made it object-oriented. They made JavaScript object-oriented in 2015. Prior to this point, it was just a scripting language. Um, and at this point, I think it pretty much evolved um, to a point where people would, you know, it kind of evolved into a programming language. Before it was scripting, it was just simple web scripting. Like in 1995, they needed, whoops, Oh, whoops, yeah, 97. So they needed some way to manipulate the DOM. Like they had Netscape um, fighting with Internet Explorer and they just needed some way to, to manipulate a web page, to move around a header, to move around a div, to move around something and just have, provide some sort of interactivity. So this guy made something that was pretty rushed. You know, he admits it was pretty rushed um, and you know, JavaScript, again, written in 10 days, it's not a myth that, you know, he's, he says it is, was pretty rushed. And yeah, they patched a lot of stuff later, but the initial design of something does dictate, you know, how it is even after 20 years, like we're still living with it. Um, what was I gonna do? And so over time, as we've grown, I don't know, more dependent on the web, I guess, as more and more complex applications have grown, um, the language itself has evolved as well. Um, and especially in the case of single page applications or SPAs, um, which honestly, at that point, if you're building an SPA, you need JavaScript, you need a lot of JavaScript, therefore you need classes, you need maybe more features, so that makes sense. But the problem is most websites aren't SPAs. Most websites are actually static or more static on the spectrum of being you know, interactive, right, functionality, and then the other spectrum of it being very static. And I'll even show you, you exactly what I'm talking about. So if we look at this website, this is Jamstack. Um, Jamstack was this trend a couple years ago. It was just another name for static websites. They were just, it's, you can think of like Hugo, certain static site generators. It doesn't really matter. Just to study here is what's important. Um, but if you look here, types of websites built in the last 12 months, um, you can see on one spectrum you have SPAs, on one spectrum you have fully static. And if you look at the blue, if you look at the blue, it's slightly more, it is more static than it is SPA. Fewer websites are SPA by, you know, a small margin, but the most are in the middle, but more are fully stat, you know, mostly are fully static, meaning, you know, less interactivity is the norm. Okay, so often you can get away with having something that's not so much in the client, so much in the browser. You can use a real programming language on a server and just, I don't know, fetch to and from. Like you can use HTMX, you can use any other, I don't know, I don't know, any other server rendering logic um, rather than having a ton of moving parts in a web browser. Um, so any, any technology, uh, any framework, any website, any, any, anything at all that accrues technical debt as it grows older, as it adds more features and complexity. Um, you know, if you look at a language like Go, it's like this incredibly simple and minimal language, right? It's almost like, it's almost like a second system syndrome where like a new system or a new thing comes along after some previous very large and and uh, I don't know, monstrous um, kind of soup of, of some project, kind of like how it was Multix and then Unix afterwards, how it's one programming language and then another language afterwards, how they make something cleaner and better and more elegant um, afterwards when they kind of strip 
parts out and just um, include what's, what's essential. Um, I think JavaScript has been around for like 25 years. So it just it's just accrued a lot of technical debt. I think that's the reason why. And I think any language um, that's lived that long will probably suffer the same. Um, so anyways, um, I just talk um, from a person who uh, is about to graduate computer science and has worked two internships uh, dealing with a lot of JavaScript. So take my word with a grain of salt. Um, and if you want to see more videos of me pretending like I know what I'm talking about, leave a like. Thank you.